Coach, the last time UK won their first three SEC series was 2017. Uh, just get a big sweep over a team that Kentucky has never swept in program history before. Just how big was getting that third win today this weekend? 17 was a good year. <laughs> yeah, that was a good year. So that's a good that's a good company to be in. Um, yeah, you know, even a couple of years ago when we had Missouri here, we we were up two games and they, they hit a home run late yeah. and took the lead and we couldn't sweep them at that point in time. So. Um, I like how we won this game, right? The first two games, we won it in a different fashion. I like how I was really proud of our pitchers. You know, they left 16 guys on base, so we had plenty of times to cave and give in and to give our guys a lot of credit. They didn't do that. And, you know, the message to Zach Lee, he threw great. At that, at, when Tommy took him out, he only gave up one run. You know, but we just felt like first and third right there to go to the matchup. I thought Jackson Novi got the huge strikeout, and then we took him out, and then Mason Moore got the one pitch out, and – I thought that was huge, you know, and that's what this team has done all year long. Each guy we kept bringing in helped out. Same thing again right there in the ninth, you know. We bring in Chavez with the bases loaded, and we get the out, and that's what good teams do. They pick each other up. You talked about the defense last night, and you got, had all kinds of great plays. That, that, not just great plays, that great plays that took away runs. It was game-saving. I mean, you think about the diving play that Hunter Gillum that took a couple runs off the board. What about the diving play that um, Jackson Gray made in center field? That was a great play. Um, how about the, uh, the the job that Devin did on that pop-up? This is the high sky. That's not an easy pop-up. I thought that was awesome. What about the time that Jackson Gray attacked the ground ball, threw a strike to Grant, the cutoff man, and he threw a strike to Jace. It took a perfect throw, two perfect throws. And now all of a sudden they have runner at first base with two outs instead of first and third and one out. So just a ton of great defense. I mean, what about what about the ball that they hit down the line, the squibber, that Devin Burks just yells, let it roll, let it roll, let it roll, that our friendly field here helps us out. And, you know, we, we got – and that's a huge – these are – you know, and, and that play is not going to show up in the scorebook. Yeah. But that was a winning play. And uh, we were going to need it all because they had a really good offense going today. Are wins like these more enjoyable than a 10-0 run rule? No, the 10 ones, 10 ones are a little less stressful. I kinda, I'll take those every time. But um, I'm just proud of the team because, you know, these games are hard to win. It's hard to win three games against a, an SEC opponent. It's hard to win three games on a weekend. Um, even right there, we had a chance to give in, and our guys, they bent, but we didn't break. So, um, but it was a good win. Nick, good you win. were talking about the way this team wins. Does that remind you much of the 17 or even the 18 team? Um, a little different from the standpoint of, like, even our first run today. Jackson Gray hit the big hop ground ball to the second baseman. You know, it's a routine play. If he's feeling sorry for himself and doesn't run, you know, um, but he beats that out. And then that opened the door, and then, you know, we were able to get the second on the throw that hit the bat, and then the next guy, you know, ends up getting in a hit. And so um, that 17 team, obviously the cliff just played so different than Kentucky Proud Park. But some of the speed and some of the power are very similar. I think the, two, the thing that two teams have in common is their desire to win that dominates. Um, both teams possess that, and this group does as well. I know you felt pretty good about this team going into the year, but did you envision 25 and 3 and 8 and 1 through? No, I didn't. I didn't like, you know, I try not to do that with our teams. You know what I mean? Like, what would the record be? Right. But what I did know is how competitive they were. And, um, you know, I had some people in the media group say, you seem really optimistic about your team this year. And, you know, I, I think you guys know this. I am a positive person. But, you know, just being around these guys from the fall, the way they just went about their business. And it's hard not to give days away. It's really hard. And what we just have a bunch of guys that have been really hungry and they haven't given days away. And so, you know, the record, don't know, but I just knew how competitive they were. And, you know, every team goes in three phases. I say that all the time. The first thing you have to do is teach your team how to compete. You gotta teach them how to win and then deal with winning. And this team has just competed from day one. And they've obviously done a really good job of making winning plays and doing the things it takes to win. So I'm proud of them because I've said this over and over, but Mr. Barnhart has made it really clear that he wants people to play for this Kentucky and the Wildcats across our chest. And that's where we have a bunch of unselfish dudes. This team was really overlooked in the preseason. Have they used that to sort of keep that hunger going through the, the winning streak? Yeah, I think you'd have to, you know, maybe look, ask each guy individually. I'm sure there's, you know, a chip on their shoulder about that. I'm sure there's, there's some of that. But, um, you know, one thing we've always talked about is, like, this year, this is a new team. 
this is a new team. And, you know, at the beginning of the year, our record was 0-0, zero and, zero and everybody was. And I remember a, a time back in the fall where I challenged our guys to act like champions before you're a champion. And that, that would be really important to us, the way we carried ourselves, the way we walked around. And I think, you know, obviously this team is showing that. The crowds this weekend have been among the best of the five years this place has been open. Just what has it meant to have the buy-in from the fans and how excited they are about this team? Yeah, it's been awesome. And uh, I told our team at the beginning of the year, you know, you got to have, you got to win. You got to win and you got to have good weather. And then uh, our administration added some beer in there. So I think that <laughs> probably helps. So, um, but yeah, I'm just so thankful. You know, just so thankful for all these people. You know what's been really cool, too, is um, to see all the kids. You know, the stand there for the anthem, for them to get on the field, for them to sign autographs, you know. Um, that has been really neat because our city loves baseball. You know that. You go to any Little League ballpark this time of year, and it's packed with people. And uh, I'm really thankful for them to come out and support us. Please forgive me if you if you're repeating yourself on yeah. this one, but did you uh, mention Chavez and, and the job that he did going in? to that situation that's a really tough spot for yeah to come in. yeah i did that's that's what the guys do and you know what he was in total control i loved my visit with him on the mound you know i've really enjoyed going out and standing there and watching the guys as they come in and just deliver some information i think it's freed up coach rosell to you know get prepared for the next batter and do some different things and um he was like totally poised and uh, he did what our other pitchers did is they picked each other up and you know i thought that first pitch break ball was awesome but I, I had a, I felt really good about him in that situation, and it shows how much trust we have. We just brought that guy in with the bases loaded, two outs, and uh, to where they're one swing away from taking a lead, and Seth uh, competed and executed really well. I believe you had just three strikeouts today, only had five hits, but putting the ball in play in an SEC series like this, just how big is that? Yeah, any time in an SEC game where you can walk more than you strike out, <laughs> that's like that's a good thing, you know. And then those HBPs are starting to add up, yeah. and they were good for us, you know. So we swung the bats, the actual art of swinging the bat the last couple days, obviously better than today. But, you know, I've always said the definition of a good offense, the definition of a good offense is your ability to score when you're not hitting. That's what a good offense can do is you can score when you're not hitting because there are six components and the hitting is one component. So the way our team's been able to score was big. What's my key in getting these guys to buy into these different roles, whether it's coming in for just getting two batters out or just getting one guy out, you know, these guys don't mind doing it. Yeah, the, it just goes back to their makeup, you know. They just, they want to win, you know. Um, and Ryan Hagen out last weekend was the guy coming in, picking up everybody else. And then this week, today we picked him up. And that's what great teams do. And um, there's a lot of guys that deserve more innings. There's a lot of guys that deserve more at-bats. But this team, the way they've just been so unselfish. And they trust each other. You, that is huge. Right, you got to. Those pitchers have to trust the catcher behind them, Devin Burks. They've got to be able to trust the next guy coming in. And when you do that, now you got something special because you're playing for something bigger than yourselves. And when you start playing for Kentucky and you start playing for your teammates and your brothers, it's a special thing. And that's what we got going on right now. Thank you, guys.